In the mid 90s, there was this thing that was expected to become the next big thing in video games full motion video. For a while, the possibility seemed endless, and the line between game and reality was blurred. We all know what happened 3D gaming became the next big thing, and FMV quickly became obsolete. But before FMV games died, several brave experiments were made. One of these was the Voyeur, originally for the Philips CDI, then ported to 3DO, Mac, and PC. Voyeur is unique. It's not any of the usual kinds of FMV games, the interactive movie, the first-person point-and-click, or the light gun game. It's a point-and-click game alright, but it's different. The premise is that you're staking out a house and clicking around to watch different scenes over the course of a weekend. The goal is to get evidence of a murder, and what's interesting is that no matter what you watch or in what order, you will always get to the end of the game. You can get a game over, but you almost have to try to get it. There's not a whole lot to say on the gameplay side, but I have to mention the load times. Every time you click on a window to watch something, the screen loads for a couple of seconds. Not the longest of load times, but you have to click a lot, it takes, so it does add up. The other complaint I have is that you only have a certain amount of battery life before the game proceeds to the next time period, which doesn't allow you to watch very much before you have to move on. It would have served the story and the tension more if you could take your time a little more. And really, to use a freaking battery when watching a house for a whole weekend, that's a travesty. Plug in a power cord for sake. The video itself looks pretty good, pixelation aside, but instead of having clips recorded on regular sets, they use actors and mix them in with pre-rendered 3D images. They mix it with foreground and background stuff, and it's done well, but the 3D itself looks really outdated. The danger that makes it so exciting, Mr. President. The overall presentation works well, even though it looks outdated. I was able to become pretty immersed after a while. So you play as a nameless person who's staking out the Hawk Manor. I like to call him Tom. Peeping Tom. Tom is trying to get dirt on Reed Hawk, a senator looking to become president. Reed is played by Robert Culp, who you might remember from the movies. I remember him from Spy Hard, the airplane scene. But I'm pretty sure, if you're watching this, that you're aware of Half-Life 2. Culp was the voice of Dr. Breen. Reed is having his family over to his house while he ponders if he should run for president. With him are his sister Margaret, his son Zach and wife Laura, his daughter Jessica with boyfriend Masa, and niece Chloe. If you watch the TV in the beginning, you can get rudimentary information on them from an overacting gossip reporter. Each of his family members has a storyline. His son Zach is upset that his dad stole the missile defense project and gave it to someone else while neglecting his wife, despite some obvious hints. At least the guest room has a king size bed. Laura. His daughter Jessica is involved with a Japanese eco-terrorist and together they're out to get revenge on Reed because his company dumps toxic waste on Masa's village. I'm talking about you sweeping it under the rug. What kind of president would do that? Just about any in recent memory. <laughs> Come on. His niece Chloe is there to confront Reed about him having raped her at 14 years of age and subsequently blackmail him for 20 million dollars. Pretty dark. I don't know exactly what his sister Margaret wants, but she's not quite psychologically stable. She's a pill popper, flies off the handle at small things. Get me the petite caviar, or you and your family will be back on the boat to that rock infested country where I first had the misfortune to find you. And it's one time seen wiping what might be blood from some scissors. But this is before anyone is murdered, so I don't know the significance of that scene. Speaking of flying off the handle, Zack has a short temper. First he's annoyed that he has to make an appointment to talk to his own father, which I have to agree is pretty lame. But then he gets this mad from being moved from his old room to the guest room. This is another one of your sick little games! Control! 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 Besides the family members, there's Reed's secretary Chantal and the security guard Frank. These two provide comic relief of sorts. They're both very perverted. In the opening scene, Chantal handcuffs Frank to Reed's bed, fools around with him a little, then leaves him there. You never get to see Reed's reaction to it though, so I guess Frank got out of the handcuffs eventually. All right, okay, look, I'll, I promise I'll do the Peruvian sheep herder thing if you just let me up. Wait, what? During the course of the game, they're involved in more kinky shit. But Chantal also doubles as Reed's personal assassin. She helps him with the murders, and when playing, you have the option to send the tape to one of the family members to warn them. If you send it to the wrong person at the wrong time, Reed gets a hold of it and sends Chantal over to kill you. 
game over. I played through the game three times. The first time, while I wasn't recording, by the way, I didn't get to see a murder. Instead I got to see Zack and his wife, Laura, kiss and make up. Very heartwarming and all, but I wanted action. The, the second f time Chloe got killed. Was it good for you, Reed? Fucking your own niece. Yes, it was. <laughs> Chloe was the one I sympathized with the most, especially since she need Frank in the nuts in the beginning. <laughs> Reed had her injected with drugs, so it would look like an OD to the press. Chloe had past issues with drugs too, so it wrapped up nicely for Reed. What a bastard. Sweet dreams, Chloe. This morning. The drug problem in this country struck directly into my heart. This morning, my niece, Chloe, was found dead of a drug overdose. The third time I played, Jessica got killed for her and the Japanese lover trying to put the squeeze on Reed. This time, Reed did the deed himself, strangling his own daughter. He then framed the Japanese eco-terrorist boyfriend and dedicated his presidential run to his late daughter. Jessica, I know you're listening. This one's for you. Zack and Margaret could also potentially have been victims. But it all depends on what scenes you watch and in what order. Zack tries to threaten Reed into giving him his missile project back, so I suppose that is what he would get killed for. With Margaret I'm not sure, she seems to be squarely on Reed's side all the time. It's implied early on that she and Reed killed their father, and possibly Reed's wife. And we both worked much too hard to let that happen. They sure have a weird relationship. By the way, this game has one of the most biased news reporters ever. This guy wouldn't even get a job at Fox News, he's that bad. How he has emerged as the clear choice of the American people. Voyeur is a really different, dark and interesting game. It's definitely worth a playthrough, if only for curiosity's sake. And the acting isn't that bad either. What? You the one that called with the stuff on Reed Hawk? So show me the tape. Due to the game changing as you play, it can be different every time and it adds replay value. Playing a game through to the end takes about 45 minutes, so you won't get bored either. Except for the loading times and the battery issue, this is a good game for the CDI, and I recommend it. Any screw-ups, Frank, I want your full attention this weekend. Yes, sir. Full attention. 